If abortion is morally wrong, aren't you responsible for discouraging it? One of the great things about our nation, Sally, is that we're each entitled to have strong personal beliefs. And we encourage other people to do the same. But as a nation, we recognize the right of all people to believe as they want and not to impose our beliefs on other people. I believe that abortion should be safe and legal in this country. I have since the time that my mom took that position when she ran in 1970 as a U.S. Senate candidate. I believe that since Roe v. Wade has been the law for 20 years, that we should sustain and support it. And I sustain and support that law and the right of a woman to make that choice. And my personal beliefs, like the personal beliefs of other people, should not be brought into a political campaign. On the question of the choice issue, I have supported the Roe v. Wade. I am pro-choice. My opponent is multiple choice. Then, on multiple choice, I've got to... Re Mr. Romney, you have 15 I, seconds to rebut on, on the idea of multiple choice, I have to respond. I have my own beliefs, and those beliefs are very dear to me. One of them is that I do not impose my beliefs on other people. Many, many years ago, I had a dear, close family relative that was very close to me who passed away from an illegal abortion. It is since that time that my mother and my family have been committed to the belief that we can believe as we want, but we will not force our beliefs on others on that matter. Thank you. And you will not see me wavering on that or be a multiple choice. Thank you very much. Mr. Romney, you say you're a moderate on social issues, one who will defend abortion rights, equal rights for women, for blacks, and for gays. In fact, you say you will do more to promote gay rights than Senator Kennedy. You also sit on the National Executive Board of the Boy Scouts of America, which has an exclusionary policy banning gay members. Do you support that policy? And have, if not, have you ever done anything as a board member to oppose it? I believe that the Boy Scouts of America does a wonderful service for this country. I support the right of the Boy Scouts of America to decide what it wants to do on that issue. I feel that all people should be allowed to participate in the Boy Scouts regardless of their sexual orientation. And under your economic program, under the program of Mr. Reagan and Mr. Bush, we saw the growth in terms of the unemployment, the growth in the number of children living in poverty, the growth in terms of those children out of, out of wedlock. Look, I was an independent during the time of Reagan Bush. I'm not trying to return to Reagan Bush. My positions don't talk about things that you suggest they talk about. This isn't a political issue. <laughs> Women. Women are concerned about the glass ceiling. Women that I have seen in organizations have not been able to have the opportunity they deserve to have in getting ahead in organizations. If we're going to compete as a nation, we've got to draw upon the skills of, of women and minorities. And I see organizations from the federal government to corporations that are not drawing on the skills and abilities of women and minorities. Let me assure you, Senator, that my entire life has been one of working with women and helping women through the glass ceiling. I believe that public companies and federal agencies should be required to report in their annual 10K the number of minorities and women by income group within the company so we can identify where the glass ceiling is and break through it. And I think that the market of America will say that company has not promoted women, has not promoted uh, minorities, and will, and will put pressure on American corporations and agencies to respond. What is your greatest personal failing and how have you attempted to deal with it? One of the challenges, one of the challenges of life in this society today is the burden of, of occupation. And I've been very busy in my work. I have a wonderful family. I'm very busy there. But you'd grow too far apart from the people you care about. And that's, after all, how we're going to be judged in this life, what we've done for other people. And so I spent two and a half years at the early part of my life living with the poor and serving with the poor. And when I came here to Massachusetts, we decided that one day each week I would give in service to people less fortunate than myself. I've spent hours and hours, hundreds of hours in hospitals across the state from Worcester to Boston, working with sick people, sick people, talking to them, consoling Mr. them. Mr. Romney, can I interrupt you? This was a question about your greatest personal failing. My I greatest... <laughs> we, we have 30 my, seconds left to get to that part of the... My, my great... My... My greatest personal failing, my greatest personal failing then, Ken, is my inability to fulfill what I think is a, is a God-given obligation to do more. And I do what I can in one day a week, but I don't do as much as I think we all can do.